Hey everybody, this is your buddy Billy from the band Fear to Stop, aka the Righteous Ball Dude. Um, over the background, sleeping, <laughs> waving her hand in the air like she just don't care, is my lovely wife Dana, the dreaded Righteous Diva. Hope everybody's doing okay. How are you doing? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. You know, I, I was I had a lot of fun today, guys. I was uh, working on music all night uh, and uh, did several different tracks already and um, it's crazy I mean I finished one song and I'm halfway done another one and I started another song in the span of what the three hours on yep and that's that's just working intermittently like we'll watch we'll watch a video or watch a you know a concert video from like from the Beach Boys and stuff and uh, play that on there and next thing I know I'm you know playing chords and stuff and um, that leads me to something. Uh, something's a pet peeve of mine. I'm gonna be real with you guys, all right. And I'm gonna try to be nice. I'm gonna try not to use any kind of uh, profane language for once. I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. So uh, here we go. I'm warning you in advance. It's something I feel very passionately about. Now, one thing that really grinds my gears, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, is when people say that because someone does electronic music. They're not a musician. No. See, she snores very majestically and very in tune. I could sample that right now, put a beat behind it, and boom, we're off to the races. But, uh, why don't you put in your phone or something like that? I'll keep you up. Mm-mm. Nah. Sure you just don't want to go to bed and I'll finish the video by myself? No, I'm good. Damn right you are. <laughs> anyway. Um... So, that, I, I don't know, people think that because you're an electronic musician, all you do is just push a button and it makes a sound. And actually, that's a keyboard, too, but we're not going there. But you just, like, you know, take a mouse, you know, and you press a button and it plays a, you know, loop or whatever like that. And, you know, that's how you make a song. Got news for you guys. Ever since I started using GarageBand in uh, December of last year, uh, someone says I'm not a musician, they're, they're, they're full of beans. All right. <laughs> I'm trying so hard not to curse. Why? I don't know. Cause I don't. I, I don't want this to be 18 or over. I want you know people of all ages to get the wisdom I'm about to impart upon them. Fool. Word. Anyway, seriously, real tall guys. Um. See, this is how I do things. Okay. I'll take GarageBand. I'll take. I'll take like a pre-made drum track or whatever like that. But I'm using it as a metronome. Okay. Play, you know, it does a little generic beat, boom, 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 you know, whatever, all that kind of stuff. And I take the uh, keyboard section in there. Hit record, let it count off. Do, 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 do. As soon as that, as soon as that, that, that fourth uh, counting is over with, as soon as the fourth counts in there, I literally start playing. I had it set. I have it set for like eight measures, okay. And I'll start. I'll, I'll play. And if I may, if I make a mistake, you know, it's then oh. You can just, you know, stop it, go back in there and edit the note, you know, take, take the little thing and just drag it over. I don't do that. I will stop it, start it over, and record that section again until I get it right. That's what I do. I do that for a keyboard part, all right? Then I do the same thing for a bass or a guitar or any other instrument that I'm going to use on there, okay? Then I get rid of that auto drummer thing that I had on there, and then I'll take the, I'll take the drum kit that's on there. And it'll have like a, if, if anybody haven't messed around with GarageBand, uh, you are snoring and it's distracting. Why don't you play with your phone? Come on, Candy Crush is calling your name. Come on, three in a row. Toasty. Mm-hmm. Toasty? That's Mortal Kombat. Can you imagine if they mix Mortal Kombat and Candy Crush? How would that work? Yeah, you're tired. Fucking got three in a row. <laughs> oh, sweet! Oh. Three punches in a row. Uh, finish him. Flawless. Uh, 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 what do you say when you do something in like Candy Crush? What's the nah? Screw it. Sweet. Yeah. It said it's toasty. It's like sweet. It don't have the same. Really? <laughs> it doesn't have the same ring to it. Um. Anyway, what was the thing? So anyway, I'll take the um, if I'll take the uh, auto drummer out, and I'll go to the uh, there's a spot where we have a drum kit. You can either use acoustic or electronic. Acoustic will actually have like a thing of like a, uh, I'll have a kick drum, and I'll have a you know, hi hat, you know, toms, you know, snare drums, you know, floor tom as well. And as 
soon as that match, as soon as the, the counting starts, I'll, 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 I'll be doing it. But the kick drum part of it, and while I'm playing that, I'll play a snare part too or something. Like that, right? Play that, or whatever the beat is. Then I'll go back in there, and I'll overdub another part, and I'll play the tops. Every rhythm that you hear on there is me. It's not, it's not a, not a dang old pre-programmed drum machine. I play that, I play that all quick. All right. Same thing if it's if it's a if it's a uh, if I decide to use an electronic drum kit, it'll have the thing. It'll have like the different uh, thing. Like I'll have like a picture of a kick drum, a picture of a snare, a picture of a hi hat, and I'm like, I will play that live. And that and with the electronic drum kit, I won't do an overdub. I will just do that live. I got I got some fast fingers. Ask her. That's how I know she's asleep. I just made a really dirty joke. They would have got this flag. Why don't you go to bed, honey? Oh, yes, you did. No, you're not. No, no, really. I'm okay. sorry, guys. No, no, I'm good. She missed the best joke ever. <laughs> what was that? To her? Oh, no, go. You know, but. Cool, me. That is the worst goofy I've ever heard. And I've seen sport goofy, mind you. Oh, my God. God, you remember in the eighties they always did those like Goofy does sport sports and they had like a Goofy golf thing, yeah, they had Goofy the, basketball. I'm um, Goofy, all right. Yeah, basketball. God, it was stupid, 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 stupid. You know, but so yeah, so everything you hear on a track, you know, everything that every part of my involvement on there, I will play live. Okay, I'll do the segment of the eight measures. Okay, after eight measure. I'll, you know, stop it, hear how it sounds, go back, you know, start, like, me measure nine, you know, and I'll hit record, so I'll play the last part of it, and I'll play the next part, and you know what, that is no damn different than, you know, somebody going in there in the studio with, with the actual keyboard, playing it, and like, oh, made a mistake, let me punch in, I'm doing the same thing. Except my studio is my phone, and my, then I, I'll, then what I'll do, I'll take each track that I recorded in there, I'll load each individual track on my computer in Adobe Audition, and I'll mix it like that. I'll, I'll I treat, I, it's no different. The only difference between me and uh, someone, and, you know, with the, uh, you know, with electric light and sound or whatever the hell damn top Abbey Road, or, you know, whatever, you know, all those different. Uh, all those different studios, the only difference, it's like I got no budget, but I do the same thing. There's no difference between me and any other uh, producer uh, or uh, mastering engineer or, or recording engineer. I do everything myself, but I do. And that right there, my friends, is an airplane. Now, another thing, vocals. Most of her stuff is instrumental. I'm trying to change that. Uh, like uh, Jamie, uh, our daughter, youngest band member, to uh, do some vocals, but until that happens, I've been doing vocals. Now, we uh, recently did a uh, cover of the Beach Boys' uh, Wake the World off of their 1968 uh, Friends album, which is my personal favorite uh, Beach Boys album. I think you're, uh, well, I don't know. I was going to get your opinion on that, but... I think, uh, unless it involves, I think 2020 may be your favorite Beach Boys album because I have, I went to sleep on it, but, <laughs> but no, nah, real talk, so Friends is like my favorite, uh, Beach Boys album, so, uh, we did a cover, me and, uh, our bandmate, uh, Dean Entwistle, uh, him and I shared the vocals on there, he played all the instruments, but we, uh, each did about four or five different parts in the harmonies and uh, you know a mixture of like he'll do a low part mid part uh, upper uh, uh, you know, tenor and then maybe a falsetto and I would do the same parts but I'll do I'll do the same range but I'll be doing slightly different parts so for every harmony I have a you know a counter harmony with it and you know, it's, you know whatever one thing I do not did not do and I will not do this is something I feel very strongly about. I do not use any auto tune. I hate auto tune. That's not not gonna happen. What I will do, all right. This is the only 
cheating I will do is I will record each part twice, okay? And if one part of it's better than the other, I'll cut the other part out. So I'll comp it, but there's no actual, you know, and it, the thing is, if it's bad enough where I actually have to chop every single thing, I will, I will just redo it because honestly, by doing that, I don't want it to ever sound like, like all of a sudden you hear, you can tell there's been edits where like the volume goes up and down and stuff, uh, mm -mm. seamless, seamless, okay? So like, if it's bad enough, it requires more than my, I, I believe in rule of twos. If you have to make more than two edits in a vocal, redo the damn thing, okay? That's what I do, all right? And when I sing, when I do these vocals, I don't just like, okay, I did my section, let me go ahead, let me go ahead and, you know, hit stop, fast forward over here, let me do another part. I will play the whole track through. I will sing, if I'm singing the tenor part, you know, the, you know I, will, I will sing that all the way through. No edits, no stops. One take. Each each track, just same thing. There's no edits in any track that I would do. There's no, you know, like I said, I, I would comp, but it would be still be on two different tracks, and it may be one word. And uh, again, rules of twos. All right. I believe in the natural sound, and I don't. This, this is what's wrong with music today, and I think you'll, uh, I think you feel strongly about this too, because what we listened earlier on Spotify, uh, I hate auto tune with a passion. And it's not just okay. You need to fix a couple notes. Okay, I understand that. Me, my voice, the type of voice that I have, because I have very, uh, I'm not a, uh, I'm a technique singer, but I have kind of a quirky voice. Uh, I've never sang a lead like 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 an actual up tempo. I've done, like I said, I did Wake the World and I did a uh, lead vocal on the cover, another Beach Boys song of uh, 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 Solar System, off their 1977 Love You album. Uh, also, no tuning on there. That one I did all the vocals and instruments on. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I don't. If I put an effect on my voice, uh, it's only in a certain part. Like, I didn't do anything on Wake the World, but on Solar System, there was a part where it was in the starlight, starlight, make this wish come true tonight, like that. I put, like, a little bit of, uh, 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 I ran, I ran, like, a, like, a Leslie a speaker effect on my voice in that one part, because, you know, Solar System, like that, it was the starlight. I wanted it to sound kind of like, you know, space. But the rest of the thing was a dry thing. It was just a, a small little thing like, hey, you know what, that'll sound cool. But it's like, these days, a lot of, a lot of these artists now, um, I like to call, like, especially what I call the SoundCloud rappers. Um, mm -hmm. I'm all, We're on SoundCloud. I'm not saying that. But I'm talking about specific genre of music that a lot of people refer to as SoundCloud rap. All right. I didn't coin the term. All right, real talk. I just use it a lot because I like it. But, uh, um, it's the same effect, the same exact setting, auto tune setting. The same exact. It's like, it's like someone made a preset and they're just using the preset. And that's what they use, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, whether it sounds good or not, it's like it has to have it. I'm like, why? I don't, I don't get it, you know. And again, believe me, I, I embrace technology. <laughs> Come on now. But you got sheriffs on that started the shit. Screw that. Uh, Zap and Raj, you know. Well, that's different, though. Jeff Beck was doing that with his guitar. Uh, like, through it, but he ran his vo voice through his guitar. Uh, and it had, like, a little doohickey on it. He referred to as the bag. And it was like, Peter Frampton, it was like the same thing like Peter Frampton would do. Yeah. You know? Like that, but but yeah, I know what you specifically the 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 tuned vocal that was that was done a lot in the early '80s. Although it was done with a uh, Fairlight synthesizer, uh, which is uh, a lot different, but it does basically the same thing. Uh, 
they were doing stuff like that, you know, pre auto tune. Uh, hell, a lot of times they'd slow a track down and sing it, and then speed it back up to hit the high notes. Never done that. I tried that one time, and I sounded like Mickey freaking Mouse. Uh, and she's like, like. Remember when James put a what's love thing? Oh, uh, with their phone app. That was hilarious. But see, I don't. My, that's what I was gonna say. Because no one's ever heard me sing. Oh, people heard me sing, but I mean, like on a recording of me doing a more up tempo. Uh, not when you say rock, but a more up tempo type thing that requires more of an aggressive voice. I have a very heavy uh, vibrato, like, uh, yeah. if you want to compare me to someone, maybe like someone like Brian Ferry, or <laughs> someone said Edith Piaf one time online, I was like, who the hell is that, and then I heard, I was like, oh, he's serious, uh, in case you don't know who it is, it was like a 1900s French uh, singer, anytime you see like those old movies and it's supposed to take place in France, you hear like a woman sing with like, like, warbly, warbly ass voice, he's like, <laughs> like that, that that's Edith Piaf you know I can actually do the voice but I'm not going to do it right now because I'm going to wake up my kid um, tiny Tim tiny Tim <laughs> you know what's funny uh, there's a thing of him doing uh, Rod Stewart's Do You Think I'm Sexy it's hilarious yes I saw it yeah, and his, it. yeah and his voice is all deep and everything like what and I, like, I was like what is this and it was like he looked like uh, he looked like a, he looked like a special needs Richard Simmons. I'm sorry. That was just like... What's that was so <clears throat> No, during that song. I'm not talking about it in joke. Because he's like doing a little spin of thing. And I was like, you kidding me? I was like, golly. That was one weird dude. I can't believe he died in the middle of a performance. He's like, go talk. He's like... Thing he just finished because yeah guys I don't know I'm, I'm kind of tired. I was like that was the end of Tiny Tim. But uh, he didn't die like that. Yeah he did. No he said he had children and he and his wife helped him down to, to the table. He went back to sit down. Oh he like he stopped the performance. I, I don't know why I thought he was on stage. Mm -hmm. Dang I had a Mandela moment because I remember when he died. I remember when it made the news. I could have sworn yeah, he was on stage. Too. 96, I'm close, I'm close to 95, you know, one year off, but see, I tell you my mind, I, it's like a steel trap, you know, my brain may have like you know, holes in this side of it, but I'm just joking, it's not a hole, it's just like a little dead spot from, you know, brain urism, but, uh, <laughs> brain urism, <laughs> I called it a brain urism, but, you know. Yeah, I thought it was that for a long time. No, did you just say for me, for my, you know, little, little, uh, uh, cranial malady that I had, you know. Four years ago. Oh my God, has it been almost four years since my stroke? It's my last one. Damn. You know, but hey, I must have made some kind of recovery. I learned how to play the piano and drums, <laughs> playing bass. You know, I added a guitar to a track last year. <laughs> you know, on the, uh, granted, not very good guitar. I was just playing, you know, noise and feedback. But it was for the track. I mean, it's not like you know, I knew what I was doing. You know, I did like a little Sid Barrett type deal. But I was saying though, back to what I was, you know, rapping at earlier. Uh, I don't understand the whole concept of uh, people using the same exact sound on their voice in every track, and everybody's using the same preset. I just, me, it's like number one, there's no creativity. Number two, you know, it, nine out of ten times, it doesn't. It doesn't fit the song, you know. I mean, what what are your, what's your thoughts on it? Huh? Yeah. yeah, it's like like I put out what song we was listening to, and I said it sounded like noise. Oh yeah, it was like uh, I can't remember what cover it was. But it was like it just completely ruined it. I'm like, why? I don't know when they did hot chip box. Yeah. Oh god, the the first cover that we heard of it. Yeah. Yeah, that one was that was abysmal. But it's like, I don't get it. It's like, why, why do people just do that? There's one thing, but, you know, trying to fix a vocal, and like I said, I don't do it, but I can understand that at least, but it's like when you're just putting an effect on it just to put, just for the sake of everybody else is doing it, and that's what the, that's what the sound is, and it's been going on for so long now that it's like, God, 
I'm waiting for like the the antidote for somebody, somebody just to do like a warts and all vocal, and everything is just like you know just natural voice voice and stuff, and watch that take off, and all of a sudden that that becomes the end thing to do. No, then that'd be too much left right. Yeah, let's see what it is, son. Even though we're the benefits of this and like the fact that anybody can make music now and put it out and you know, that benefited us I mean my guy would be doing this for 20 years now but um, because it's so easy to make music now it's like why take the time to make a work of art we can make a piece of commerce real quick it's like if it's going to sell anyway who the hell cares right Right. See, I can't. I ain't like that, guys. You know, we don't. We don't operate like that. The six of us. We just. You know, if it sells, it sells. My thing is, I just want people to hear our music. You know, and that's another thing. I it pisses me off when I hear artists that are rude to their fans. They show up late to concert or they be dicks to them online. You know, I don't. I don't like that because my thing is, these people that that go to your concerts or stream your music, hopefully paid. Lama, Lama was real bad about that time. I know, Scott, well, Scott, yeah. You know, I'm not trying to make excuses, but Scott had his demons. But I'm talking about the people who just, they, they ain't even know nothing. They just don't feel like showing up. They're just like, whatever. I'm like, these people, you know, they're paid. They don't want to put you in that position. You know? Uh, and it's like, just I don't get it. It's like, when, when does somebody stop being a musician and you start being a celebrity? I'm not saying that just because you're a celebrity, you're no longer a musician. I'm talking about the ones who become strictly about being a celebrity. You know, and there's no care in the music, and there's literally just, give me the damn paycheck. You know, oh, there's a fan. Oh, God, I got to deal with these people again. Come on now. Seriously, I mean, if I was... Telling you right now, I'm making a promise. All right, I'm saying this right now on April the damn 10th, 2021. I'm saying this right now. Good Lord, listening. Her listening. Probably can hear me. Someone's listening. Everybody's listening. Let me tell you this. If I ever become in a position where I'm, you know, about like a fan base, you know, and I'm somewhat known, I'm not saying I'm ever going to be like the world's biggest star. I mean, come on now, I'm 40. I'm only 43 years old. But, you know, if I ever had, like, you know, like, sustained success and I actually have, like, a fan base and I'm touring and stuff like that, and I will never, ever, ever just blow off a fan like that. You know, I can see, you know, if I'm, if I'm at, you know, a restaurant eating with my family and, you know, I'm trying to take a bite of, like, fish or something like that, and the dude's like, hey, you know, like that, and, like, so I was like, hey, you know, I appreciate you being a fan, you know, thank you, but, you know, I am trying to eat with my family, you know. Like that, but you'll never see me go on like Instagram or something like that. A picture of me shooting a finger, like screw you guys for not buying my last record. Come on, you know. Or the artists, they get they get offended because their fans have a different interpretation of what they what they're intending in the music than they actually did. It's like, so what? You know, just say, hey guys, that's not what the song is about. This is what it is. You know, there's a. I'm not going to say his name, all right, there's several of them, but I'm not trying to start no stuff just in case, you know, just in case, but there's, you know, a legendary band, all right, for many years, many, many, many years band, okay, way more than us, all right, classic band, and, uh, you know, got angry, and this is a person who's a talented musician, but out of these six of them, I think he's by far the least talented person in the group. Just being real. You know, I don't care if he had his career before the rest of them did, by a few years. Ooh. You know, whatever. No one really cares about Bruce and Terry. That, that band. That's not the one I'm talking about. You know, eagle eyed observers, you know, or eared. Eagle eared. You know, but sharp eared observers will know who I'm talking about. But. But this dude, um, he, uh, 
not fanatic because of the fans online on a certain message board were talking about this one song everything about how you know it was like uh, how the writer of the song which wasn't the guy who complained mighty uh, you know did all this um, God, I'm trying so hard to be vague uh, brilliant arrangement and how you know the song conveyed uh, this meaning you know and there's other persons like no that's not what it was entirely no you're wrong you know you people don't know anything I hate it when, when when people think they know more than us I'm like <laughs> number one at least somebody took the time to even analyze your music prick number two what you do is like no nah, man this is what I this is what I do. Let me choose option number two. Online says, "Hey, oh, uh, that's a pretty cool interpretation." But actually, this is what it was really about. You know, I'm just say what it is because honestly, I love talking about art. You know, about my about my art. And uh, that's what it is. True. I I love to get people like give like their interpretations on why I, you know I chose like a certain chord progression, you know, or why you know I added this instrument here. You know, why did I add a marimba here and over there? I took that same sound and set it a marimba. Now it's a music box, you know. And like, oh, did the music box appear at the end of the song too? Yes, it is. And actually, uh, if you listen to it, it's the same part except it's in a slightly lower key. I love discussing this stuff. So why do people, artists, get offended if someone takes the time? to really be interested in their stuff and uh, you know it's like dude it's like it's your it's your baby and you know what guess what sometimes your baby's got to get up got to grow up and get out in the world and then you become proud of them and watching them grow you know you don't just keep them in the crib suffocate them and die, make them die of SIDS you know because that's what the language because that's what they're doing with these songs I mean that's basically what you want to do is protect them you already put it out. Once you put it out in the world for people to hear, which, if that's not what your goal is, you're in the wrong business, personally speaking. Uh, but once you, you put it out for the world to hear, it's out there. That's what you should want to do. Yeah, you make money off it, hopefully. I don't. But, you know, most people, not most people, a lot of people make some kind of money off of it. But... can make money from doing other things too. I mean, I make more money from my, you know, my regular job than I ever do in music. That's on yourself. I don't whore myself. Oh, oh, you mean like generally speaking, but like I said, my actual, I'm not, it's not a not a fast job. My actual forty hour plus week job pays way more than music. You know, if I toured, that'd be different. You know, if I played live shows with us, you know, we played live, that'd be different. But. I just want people to hear this stuff. I mean, streams don't pay anything. <laughs> All right, hardly anything. Point zero zero eight cents if you're lucky. Usually, <clears throat> excuse me, usually lower than that. But like, okay, like five dollars a month for a stream, right? Eight, eight bucks like this past month. That means a thousand people plus heard her, heard her stuff. That's cool. I like that. That's that's what means something to me. And. One day, well, God willing, you know, I'll be able to, you know, uh, maybe have a friendly disagreement with someone over why, you know, you chose this certain production technique instead of another, you know, or why did you add so much, you know, uh, uh, low end, you know, and, and kill the high end? Well, because the song was the song was about being underwater, and he wanted it to make it sound like an ocean bottom of the sea but you know I'm just that's rhetorically speaking I haven't done that yet oh that's a good idea we should do a song maybe call it like beyond the sea and uh, run some effects I make it make the whole track sound like it's underwater you know and maybe add like like wave effects but slow it down and maybe reverse the wave sounds like no you know no I'm serious I'm not playing I'm not playing I got an idea for some. anyway guys uh, Holy crap, we're at the 30 minute mark. Alright. 
uh, sorry that took so long, but I appreciate y'all uh, taking the time to listen to what I had to say. Uh, you know, a lot of times we do funny videos and stuff because, you know, it's fun. You know, haha. You know, jokes are cool. But I uh, wanted you to kind of get a little glimpse of the real me for a moment, as it were, and uh, kind of let you know what I'm about, you know. So, yeah. And if, again, if someone says I'm not a real musician, uh, you can do a world of favor, go chase yourself, for real. Till next time, guys. Uh, do you have anything you want to say? Add to it. I just want to say I like to myself. Like, it really does. Not to stop understand why it's got to be so big. We should do a song. I'm gonna write lyrics for it. I'm gonna auto tune my voice. I want it to sound like like the, the that that like what we're listening to earlier, but the lyrics be something about about like the whole thing's like a joke, like a parody, and the song the like the lyrics are actually about writing a, ch a cheesy pop song, you know, and like like you know how like like uh, to use an example when Billy Joel uh, wrote the Entertainers, I am the Entertainer, you know, like the whole song's about being jaded. Like that, yeah. like they have to cut the song down to your five, you know, and I'm Mary Way and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like the same approach, except kind of like modernized, like that, and have a song like, like, uh, let's see, uh, like you make a thing like I press a button and, and uh, you know, fix the pitch wind up with like $50,000 in the six foot bitch, you know, just something like that. <laughs> It'll just happen all the time. You know, I love you know, like, I'm just, you know, stuff like that. But you get what I'm saying, though, right? Oh, well, here we go. Here we go, here we go again. Here we go, here we go again. Anyway. Here we go, here we go. That's why I'm a singer. But. <laughs> By David Letterman laugh. No, David Letterman would be like, hee 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 hee, zinga zinga. I find it annoying. No, you know what I thought was annoying? Real talk. Whenever they had a band on Letterman, whoever it was, you'd always see Paul Schaefer's bald ass. I can say that. Like that, playing a keyboard with one hand, he's doing it. Like that. I'm like, and if you look at it, he's just playing the same notes over and over again. So it's like, probably. <laughs> You know, like, a and he's like, bang, 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 and David, and David Letterman's like, zing, pow, ping, pow, and so like, freaking Joe Pesci and the Goodfellas, you know, hey, with, uh, you Tommy, know. yo. Paul Schaefer has a kid of 75. He did? I'm exaggerating, but. Yeah, a kid, for real? Look it up. I thought he was, I, I didn't know he liked women. I just thought that wasn't his, 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 his orientation. I'll be diggity darned. I'm amazed. Maybe I'm amazed at the fact that but Paul yeah, Schaefer's um, not gay. You know what? I didn't realize this until <laughs> later on. I think we saw this like a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. We found out that um, David Letterman was a jerk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah David Letterman's been canceled in my book. Some his touchy feelings. So I always thought he was kind of, I don't know. And the funny part is his humor wasn't really that. It got old after a while to me. Like the top ten list things were funny, but like like there were things about like like during the interviews that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And now I know why. But he used to like to start stuff. And anyway, guys, that's another video. We can what talk you about that another time. Like Feel on people. Color, uh, a lot of them. Like he like, accidentally feel them up. Anyway, guys, uh, I can say that now. One of my burners bridge was going to have a show with his, with his little furry grizzly Adam's beard. You know, go up there. Like, what are you going to do? Try to grope you or something like that? How are we going to get on a show? Come on now. Yeah, I'm like, God. Now it's like, he looks like the type that wouldn't have to worry about you around him, have to worry about Jamie. Anyway. <laughs> David Letterman looks like he drives a brown van with no windows. Anyway, <laughs> okay, look, guys, till next time. Good golf, good tennis, whatever makes you happy. Don't auto tune Superman. <laughs> what? Can you imagine that? 
uh, uh, what's the say? Uh, what what's Superman say when he takes off high hope not high hope silver away? But it's, a, it's a bird. It's a plant. No, that's what people say about him. Like anyway, faster than a speeding bullet. I gave up. Whatever. Anyway, guys, be nice to each other. Don't use no auto tune. And uh, stay healthy. Stay safe. Wear your mask in public. Or I'll beat the hell out of you. Peace. Peace. Word.